I want to share with you a story of health. The best thing is that it's a true story of how the Living Library Project grew from Marguerite Forks to Guysboro, Sherbrooke, Canso, Petit de Gras, and Mulgrave. It all began with a man named Paul Chasson who asked family and friends to donate to the library in his memory. To celebrate his beautiful gift and his life, we created the very first Living Library Garden. He must have been a truly inspirational person as 82 people attended the opening of Paul's Garden in Marguerite Forks. I just want to say thank you so very, very much. This is incredibly touching um, and an incredibly apt memorial. Really, I think the fact that it's a garden at a library is pretty much as good as it is. Uh, and I know that. Uh, Amanda and Henry I will visit every year and see it continue to flourish and progress. And it's persistence and it's very good. So thank you. Okay. Hey. So here we are at Paul's Garden at the Marguerite Library, the Cody and Memorial Library with Kim, who is our librarian here, and Kim has been key to planting this garden. So I just wanted her to explain what we have behind us in the garden. Well, in this bed, what we did is we planted using the uh, Three Sisters, which is a traditional uh, Native American way of planting, companion planting, with the three species, the pumpkin, which is looking a little sad in the heat right now, <laughs> the corn, and then climbing up the tree to pull the beans. And the reason that they planted the three species together, the pumpkin would shade the ground and also created a little bit of uh, difficulty for raccoons to come in and get the corn. The corn supported the beans and they were able to climb the stalk. Um, so it was, a, it was a method of planting the, the three species together to benefit the Okay, so we need to do this because we're not using pesticides, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're farming organically here. Um, oh, our fantastic! Bed is, is basically uh, composted uh, uh, manures that we've got and some old hay and some straw in there. And uh, yeah. So we have to use knowledge to make a better garden. Which works for the library. It does. <laughs> it's a lot of observation, a lot of reading, a lot of learning from, uh, from past experience. There's no sense reinventing the wheel. They just find out what others have already, already discovered and learned and can learn from and plant a garden like this. And that's why we're doing it, because we want to help people learn about gardening. Yes. Thanks so much, Kim. You're welcome. Hi, welcome to the Living Library Project in Guysboro, Nova Scotia. You're at the Cyril Ward Memorial Library here, and I'm Cindy Lelliot, I'm the librarian. And this is one of our raised beds that we put in as part of our garden project this year. We have four beds here, and we decided to try it as part of an initial project and just see how the beds, how the beds worked, and we've been thrilled with the success and the, the joy that it's brought to the community and to the people who work here and in all ways it's been a resounding triumph for us. I'm a gardener and have been for a few years. I'm, I'm fairly new to it but it's something that gives me a lot of joy and I have quite, quite a passion for it and the thing that I really wanted to have happened here in Guysboro has happened and that's that it has been, become a true community effort to put these gardens in. We had four children that came and planted, uh, probably the youngest, I think she is six, and we had um, one sort of middle-aged adult and we had one lady who is part of the gardening club and is a, a library patron here and is a senior. And they came over and the seven of us planted the gardens. Uh, with the exception of throwing in a few nasturtium seeds, we planted only vegetables because we wanted to offer something to the community that they could truly use. Flowers are beautiful and they are ornamental and they look lovely. However, we can't eat them and part of the desire in putting in what really has become a library and a community garden is for people to realize the benefit and to understand that it doesn't take very much space to grow vegetables and yet you can produce a lot of product, which we have, and certainly um, it's something that is sustainable and people can do for themselves with relative ease. 
just going back for a minute to the community aspect uh, we planted and we I've discovered I didn't realize that uh, one of the reasons why things were growing so well was that someone comes by often on Sundays and she weeds and waters the garden and I didn't realize why our zucchini in particular were growing so well but discovered that she was in and and weeding um, unbeknownst to me so what we did when, <clears throat> pardon me when the gardens first started producing was that um, we just would offer people a bag when they would come in the library and we would just say would you like some greens you're welcome to go out and pick um, i felt very strongly about the fact that um, for people to truly appreciate what happens here they have to come out and experience and pick for themselves um, we with very very few exceptions haven't been doing that for people but we certainly have welcomed people to come by and stop and pick up whatever they would like Generally, people take a bag, they sort of understand the nature of sharing, um, or they do understand the nature of sharing, and they seem to have been very receptive to the whole process. I have. Hello, I'm Marcia Anderson. We're here in the Sherbrooke Library, where we obviously have books and other print materials, but we have an exciting program that we're involved with this year, the Living Library. We have gardens out front where we have vegetables growing. Now, this is a really neat thing because we see people going by, looking at our vegetables, what watching what's happening. The seniors planted the gardens, the, and of course they're enjoying the benefits of the, of the uh, growth that's happening there, and are finding it very, very tasty compared with some of the things that they do have to buy. It's also giving them the idea that yes, they can too can have this type of garden in their own yard because it doesn't take up a lot of space and for the intense gardening that's happening there and the intense planting, a lot of vegetables can be grown in a very small spot. Naturally, we are working towards expanding this idea for next year so that we can have a greater variety of vegetables, again, to show people that it can be done and also the food security idea that, yes, it's necessary to be able to produce our own food and to have it close at hand. We the nutrient level this. barriers put around to keep the deer out. The rabbits aren't too busy this year in our area, but our seniors certainly are. They come to get books, they come to get vegetables. It's a one-stop shop. They're enjoying the vegetables so very much, and next year we would like to get the Grammys and the grannies and the grandmothers coming with their grandchildren to help plant and then eventually harvest and taste all of these things that we okay. are growing. Now let's go take a look at this garden and see all the things that have been growing. Okay, here we have some of the kale, one of the up and coming vegetables of the year. A lot of people are enjoying this for the first time and are appreciative of the fact that it is available to try without any pressure or any expense on their part. Over here we have radishes and other things that have been taken out completely. Here some of the radishes have gone to seed, but they produce an interesting little pod that is so delicious in stir fries. It adds just a little... Shot. Here we have our expensive vegetables, the expensive salads, the mescaline. And a number of people again are trying this one and wondering what it's all about. Again, enjoying the flavors of something different, which they perhaps wouldn't have tried normally if it was available in a grocery store. So this is giving the opportunity for people to expand their eating palette and enjoy vegetables that they normally wouldn't have the opportunity well, we to do so. And we have greens. And uh, that's about all we could grow here. Yeah, next year we want to expand so we might get a little more adventurous. Yeah, I think we'll make some racks next year or have some racks made to grow scarlet runners. Oh, nice. And is that the beans? The beans, the bean that I have in on the table. Oh, okay. That I'm showing off. Oh, good, good. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, see, I don't know anything about gardening. That's why I wanted to have gardens and libraries because I, I, I don't garden, right? So well, I'm hoping next year that I can encourage the, villi the uh, library people to uh, be able to get racks made oh, yeah. so that the scarlet runners can grow and then we'll have the hummingbirds come to oh, the library. Nice. So nice. you don't have to fill feeders because the hummingbirds come to the flowers on the scarlet runners. Oh, nice. That would be delightful. Yeah. Well, I'm sold. I'm sold oh, on good. that. Good. Um, yeah. And do you think it's what do you think of the idea of having a community garden? Do you think, like, I mean, have you eaten some of the vegetables yet? 
In this? In this? Yeah. Oh yes, I come down every evening and snitch a few. Oh, so <laughs> if it, it, Marcia picks them when I'm here, but uh, I still snitch them in the nights when Marcia's home. <laughs> Bonjour, je m'appelle Julissa David et je suis la coordinatrice des services en français. Voici le jardin de la connaissance à la bibliothèque de petit de Gras. À les participants et les participantes à de, de, du programme de lecture d'été ont planté des pois à la première semaine du programme et ont pu les voir développer. À maintenant, on a des oignons, des patates, des tournesols, um, des fleurs et toutes sortes de légumes. Et, um, les enfants beaucoup aimé um, faire ce projet et ils ont beaucoup développé leur connaissance du jardinage. Welcome to our community garden. It's been a learning experience for everyone. Um, next year, hopefully, we'll do this again and we'll be a little more selective over what we plant, but. We were late and so what we have here was what was left at the co-op and the children came, uh, they did the planting and there were a few mishaps. We have all our radishes dumped in one spot but we're weeding them out and some of the children are taking them home and uh, we're very pleased with what we have so far. Chief Librarian of Eastern Counties Regional Library and I'm at the Mulgrave Living Library Garden Project. Um, we really were, out of all the locations that have library gardens uh, as part of this project, we were the location that really didn't have a gardener on staff. Like we didn't know what we were doing. We just kind of thought, okay, we're gonna figure this out and plant some stuff and as you can see, things grow even if you're really not an expert like we've got green tomatoes we've got carrots we have had cucumber we've got potatoes <sighs> the staff actually have been really impressed because they just kind of in their mind threw things in the ground and look we have vegetables it's great um, and it's kind of proof positive that anyone can garden that you can figure it out you can make it happen and stuff will grow and it's just so delightful and satisfying when it happens um, the great thing is we've been able to take home products ourselves, give it away to library patrons. I was talking to a staff person the other day and she was saying it was great. Her daughter came down, picked some stuff, and went home and made a salad. So that's just so delightful to be able to foster healthy eating in a community and even make like a workplace healthier. Um, plus it's really, well, you know, no one's really said it on, on this film project yet, but these gardens, they just make people happy. You know, it's so delightful to see things grow. And so, um, it's just a joy to be able to introduce them to you and say, yeah, we've got this crazy idea of having library gardens and it's successful because we've had things grow and people have eaten them and enjoyed them. Thank you. Um, I knew the project was getting successful when I was at the Guysboro Library and this 12 year old boy drives up and he comes into the room and he says to everybody at the library i'm here to pick some kale and he goes out back with a bag and picks kale um it's pretty amazing to get kids actually going out of their way to get those kind of vegetables that are super healthy uh and i think there's probably mothers everywhere that would be delighted if their children were actually wanting to eat kale or it just seemed like a bit of a miracle to me that we'd actually achieve that where somebody was coming. But you 